Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna be diving into one of my favorite desserts, one of my favorite treats of all time. A wonderful snack, a wonderful uh, dessert, duh. And just all around um, iconic treat. And that is Girl Scout cookies. And if you live in the US, you've most likely heard of Girl Scout cookies. I don't know if they're international. Let me find that out. Okay, so I'm gonna go with Girl Scout cookies are only in the US. I wasn't a Girl Scout growing up. I was in 4-H, which is a little bit different, not a little bit, it's entirely different from like the scout organization. It's more like animal and ethics based versus like selling cookies. But I think Girl Scout cookies are awesome because I think they're an iconic staple of like this one time of year, like everyone just like tries to get these cookies and you can only buy them from Girl Scouts, which is really cool. So I thought today, why don't we redesign the box, you know? Their boxes have evolved slowly over the past few years. A little bit of this and a little bit of that but mostly they're pretty much the same. So the approach I'm gonna be taking is I am gonna veer away from the Girl Scout brand a lot, but I'm still gonna keep the logo relatively the same. Like I'm still gonna keep this like clover shape that has like these faces in it. I'm gonna keep that. Um, but I'm gonna refresh the type, liven up the box a little bit more. It'll probably end up coming out a little bit more mature than this. I know these are sold by children, but I think the people who buy them is pretty much anyone. So I'm gonna have some fun with it, make it a little bit more modern, make it an indie brand, if you will, and have some fun with some cool type and some cool color, you know, how I do. Gonna do my little thing, probably make some people mad, but you know what? That's all right. Again, if you're new here, I welcome you to my channel. Uh, my name's Kelly, I'm a graphic designer. I do YouTube on the side. I also do freelance work and I'm taking only a few select freelance clients. So if you want to reach out to me, all of my info is in the description box below. And also, uh, this is my, my second video filming with my Invisalign in, so bear with me. It's a little bit hard to talk, so I don't normally sound like this. So without further ado, uh, let's dive into this video. So just like Googling like the history of Girl Scout cookies specifically. So they're cookies sold by Girl Scouts to raise funds to support Girl Scout councils and individual troops. Commonly sold going door to door or through school or townwide fundraisers, these cookies are widely popular. The program is intended to both raise money and improve the financial literacy of girls. During the average selling season, usually January through April, more than 1 million girls sell over 200 million packages of cookies. Jesus. <laughs> and raise over $800 million. Babe, did you know that Girl Scout cookies raise over $800 million in a season? Really? Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so history. Uh, the first known cookie sales by an individual Girl Scout unit were by the Mistletoe Troop in Muskogee. Muskogee. Oklahoma in December 1917. Geez. Okay, so they're well over 100 years old at this point. That's awesome. So diving into the actual cookies, there's a lot of cookie flavors. Not a lot, but yeah, you know, there's some there's some staples. So you got your Thin Mints, you got your Caramel Delights slash Samoas, depending on where you live. Peanut Butter Sandwiches slash do -si -dos, uh, Peanut Butter Patties slash Tagalongs, Lemonades, Shortbread or Trifoils, uh, thanks a lot, Girl Scout s'mores, uh, coffee tastic, caramel chocolate chip, never heard of that one, and lemon up. I think that's a new one. Oh yeah, it is a new one. Okay. So they do have different names depending on like, I think where you live in the US because they're made by different bakeries. So here in LA, I have Tagalongs, Samoas, and Thin Mints. And we also have a bunch of other ones in our kitchen. But these are the three I'm gonna be focusing on today since they are the, I don't know if they're the most popular, but they are like of the, all of the Girl Scout cookies, these are some of the most popular. I know um, the do -si dos are also really popular and we also have those. Um, but these three are my, Favorites, the classic is the Thin Mint. These are the top seller, making up 25% of their sales. Then we have Samoas, which are my personal favorite, or Caramel Delights. And then we have Tagalongs. So Tagalongs are a crispy cookie layered with peanut butter and covered with a chocolatey coating. Samoas are crisp cookies with caramel, coconut, and dark chocolatey stripes. And then Thin Mints are crisp chocolatey cookies made with natural oil 
oil of peppermint. Cool, all right. Uh, so those are the three variants I'm gonna be making today. I'm gonna start off mm, maybe with tagalongs and go from there. We'll make the variants. I won't. I don't think I'll show everything because it's gonna take a, a while, but I'll show you how I make the first one and then I'll show you the variants at the end. So cool, let's dive into it. I'm gonna cut this. Okay, so just doing a little Googling on the logo. It looks like they recently made an update to uh, kind of straighten out these necks so they're not so like weirdly like these, you know, those. Um, and they added a little bit of a bang to this lady in the front. Cool, awesome, awesome, awesome. I grabbed a high res version of their logo and I'm just gonna image trace this in Illustrator. Go ahead and give that a little image trace. Cool, I did a pretty good job. I'm gonna expand it, ungroup, neat. Okay, so we have our logo right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make color profiles for uh, the sets of cookies that I'm gonna be doing because I wanna have like a main color and then I wanna have just a secondary color because I'm gonna keep the, um, what's the word? Sash that goes across the front of the box because that like mimics their actual like sashes that they wear where they have like the little patches on it. I think that's cute, I wanna leave that, but I do wanna do something crazy and take off the photo to kind of minimize the amount of texture on the box and make it a little bit cleaner. And yeah, so I know, crazy decision, stay with me. So keeping that and I wanna have like the main color, so still keeping the same shape, main color being on the sides and then I wanna fill this sash area with just a secondary color that I see that would like complement the flavor profile of the cookie, you know what I mean? So for these, I wanna have some pretty modern colors for the red. I want like a really warm red like Oh, probably help if I'm in the right color profile. Hopping into RGB, my friends, because I can. Maybe we can go a little bit more orange with that. Not ah, too orange. Red is a really hard color, just in general, to find the right one. And like even in Pantone, there aren't really that many good reds. It's it's a tough one, it's strange. Okay, so for my secondary color for my tagalongs, I wanna do a really good orange, like a bright, a bright old orange. I think that's fun. And then for my Samoas, I'm gonna do, so they've got like a pretty cool toned purple somewhere in this range. What if I mm, lighten it and mute it? A, oh my God. Lighten it and mute it a little bit. And then a supporting color for that, I would probably go the blue route like that. And then for my Thin Mints, they've got this really great like clovery Kelly green. A little bit more blue. I don't know why that's defaulting to grayscale. Someone tell me why. Okay, let's go a little bit lighter and a little bit more muted. Cool. I think we can kind of mute up all these colors, but let's get this. What do I see pairing with Thin Mint? Maybe like literally like a lighter minty color. Yeah, I'm into that, okay. Um, let's mute up this purple, lighten up this blue. Ooh. Ooh, okay. And this is also nice too because they're sold in the spring. So we can go a little springy with this. Ooh, I love that red. Okay, cool. All right, there are color profiles. So I'll label this tag along. Default to my good old raw grotesque. Throw it into caps. All right, cool. So we got that going on. Now I downloaded a mock-up. I will link it in the description box below if you also want to use it from Mock-Up World. It's a pretty decent mock-up and it has like a few different box sizes. This is what it looks like. A few different, as in, it has two different box sizes. But I'm gonna try to knock out one of these boxes and if not, I'll just style another box to fit within it. Um, because all of these boxes are different sizes. And for example, the Samoas come in a real skinny tray versus the tagalongs come in a little bit of a wider tray and the thin mints are just in sleeves so I think I can kind of fake that a little bit to kind of fit the mock-up but I also might just like forget it and do all of them to be the same size to make my life easier um, so that's the mock-up I'm working with so I pulled the size dimension from that mock-up and brought it in down here. Um, it's like eight by three or something. So that's like the box I'm gonna be working within. So let's go ahead and I'm doing this off the cuff. I did a little bit of like inspo research, but you know what? Let's have some fun today. Let's go go wild guys. 
So I grabbed some fonts that I liked. There's this typographer, his name's James Edmondson. He works, or I think he owns Ono Type. And I think like all of his fonts are just like unbelievably good. I love them. Um, so I found this one, Kovic Sands, which is just like this like ultra minimal, good old, grotesque type of font. And then I found Mono 45, uh, which is just like a great, a great headline font. And then Input Mono, which is like a similar vibe to Kovic Sans. It's very clean. It's like good old mono typeface. Um, did I, have I not activated these? Let's activate all of these. Okay, cool. Um, so we got all those going. I have a few different fonts in mind with what I want to work with. So let's hop on over. Okay, my computer is starting to take off. Why is my camera half dead already? Are you kidding me? Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a circle around the logo like that. Actually, no, let's not do a circle. Let's do an oval. Okay, so on the top line up here, let's try a few different fonts. What did I have in mind? Were we trying out Ono oh Blaze Face? So I added this Kovic Sans font as a circle lock up here. And then I think I'm also gonna mimic what they have as their current logo. Well, they have it like written out, like bottom to the left. So that's what it, it looks like right now. I think I'm gonna just take this same font that I love so dearly and type it out here. Maybe we try to center it. Mm, mm. I do like it in just a title case. Oh, I like that a lot too. Okay, I added an extra space right here because I do like a little bit of a bigger space. You know what? I'll do it the proper way and just current it. Okay, cool, I'm, I'm into that. I think that I like that more than the circle logo, but maybe we'll give that a try. Yeah, you know what? Yep. Throwing text boxes all over the place. Let's just, that'll go over there in the reject pile. Okay, so we have our new typeface. Um, for that, I'm leaving the logo because I really like it. I think it's awesome, but we're gonna be focusing on the box. So we got this all locked up. Oh, they have it all lowercase right now. Mm, I don't like it all lowercase. I like it kind of in that title case. Okay, so let's drop it down into our main uh, panel of the box. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna make that I can go away. I'm gonna outline that group it, and we're gonna, I'm gonna lock that. All right, so I scaled Girl Scouts down to be the width of the clover icon. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out into white. Or maybe we do a slight off white. And then to create my sash. All right, so we have that sash. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out into that orange. Ooh, okay. Into that, into that so far. I think it's kind of cool because it like puts like the Girl Scout logo in the spotlight, which is fun. And so over here, I'm gonna use up this space to kind of show off the flavor or the individual name for each cookie because I want to have some big old type over here. So for this, I'm gonna go into the skinnier version of it, the regular. So I wanted to break up. I'm gonna shrink the width of this dash. Okay, so that is one font option. I'm not 100% on board with it. I don't think it's tall enough, so I might do a version with, what was that font called? Mon, mon, mono 45. I'm just gonna have to retype this. Oh, nope. Actually, that might be fun to break it into three lines. Tag alongs, tag alongs, break it by the, the syllable, maybe. I mean, I'm really not mad about that font at all. I do still really like this one, but maybe I can use that for some secondary type. And what if we put this into like a really bright blue? Ooh, 
I like that. So right here, I wanna do a little like call out thing and have like the product description. So for the tagalongs, it's gonna be the crispy cookies layered with the peanut butter and chocolate comforty, blah, 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 that whole thing. So I'm gonna go into my star tool and holding shift. So you'd normally get like this star. And then if you hold option or alt, you straighten out those lines. And then something one of my coworkers showed me is if you press, oh, up and down, you can, oh my God, incredible. You can get all these shapes. I think I'm gonna go with that to make that the off weight for now. And then I'll grab a little text box. That is a lot of type to fit into that little bubble, but let's go with it. Let's look like in caps. I like it in caps. Maybe we bump up the weight a little bit. Okay, ooh, maybe in an italic, that's fun. Oopsies, my computer exploded. So I only lost a little bit of my work, so remember to save. Thank you, my autosave saved a few of my last steps, but gave me a chance to rethink. I changed this from regular to bold, and I uh, kind of uh, took this blue from the Samoa box, so they all can kind of match a little bit. So I'm thinking I'm gonna add the text in here, and maybe I'll do it in a circle. Maybe? So I'm gonna trim down the body copy. Um, not the body copy, what am I saying? I'm gonna trim down the copy a little bit because it is a little excessive of like, the crispy cookies layered with peanut butter and I'm just gonna trim it down a little. So we're gonna go crispy cookies layered in peanut butter, a chocolate coating. Okay, Whoop. that's still a lot of text. <laughs> Maybe we'll just go with cookies layered in peanut butter with a chocolate coating. Okay, let's copy that. And I would really like to put this in a circle, but we'll see how the design universe feels about that. Okay, so that's what that would look like. Still a lot of text. Let's try to bump up the weight. Mm, not really working for me. Okay, I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna move on. Like I can, I don't know, maybe tuck that behind that or it can stay on top, whoops, stay on top and then like the cookie covers tag along a little bit as well. And then up here, I wanna put a little banner that says like, uh, what is it? Oh, the Girl Scout cookies proceeds stay local because I think that's really important and you're supporting your local Girl Scout troop. So I wanna put a little, little thingy thing up here because we have the space. We'll see if that stays. I might end up tucking it down here. Let me, let's just, let's just see. Let's play around and see what happens. Um, if I were to put it into a text box down there, left justify it. And then what if we made this that blue color? See, I like that little pop of blue, it's nice. Ooh, maybe, maybe. If I, maybe we go with the whole thing. Crispy cookies layered with a, or with peanut butter. They have a period at the end. I think I don't think we need that. Convert that to live type like that. And I think maybe right here in our little shebang, we can put the little cookie. Brilliant, brilliant, perfect. Okay, now that we have this open, oh, we don't need one that big. Let's see what our select subject brings us today. Okay, it's not bad. All right, I'm going to bump up the levels a little bit on this guy. All right, I mean, I really like that. I really like how that turned out. I wonder if we put like a little offset drop shadow underneath it, how that would look. So it has a little bit of a drop shadow. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Ah, uh, this. This writing, I feel like it needs a little bit of love. Okay, there we go. That helped a little bit. Well, let's save. Let's add the net weight. Okay, and now up here, I wanna add the little text of, let's just go, proceeds, stay local. Maybe we put that in a little circle up here. 
Okay, I'm okay with that. I think it would be better though if I took this text and flipped it the other way. Like that. All right, there we go. Now let's move on to the other boxes. Hope you enjoyed the final look for those boxes. Had a lot of fun doing them. Now, before we continue, I want to thank today's sponsor for today's video, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is offering my viewers 10% off your first purchase with them. Just go to squarespace.com slash Lauren or hit the link in the description box below and start building your online presence. Whether you're an established brand or you're just getting started, the Squarespace commerce platform supports the way you do business. Whether you're selling your art online or you're billing for design services, they've got you covered. Squarespace offers email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All of their customer care team members are in their office and respond to all help requests within about an hour. Squarespace is what I've been using to host my own portfolio for the past four, almost five years now, and I cannot recommend them enough. So to all of my graphic designers out there, whether you're just building a portfolio for the first time or thinking about redoing it, go head over to Squarespace, save 10% on your first purchase with my code KELLAUREN, K-E-L-L-A-U-R-E-N, or of course, hit that link in the description below so you can save that coin and start building your portfolio, your online presence, whatever it may be. All right, that's all. Let's get back to the video. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing the final product. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I've looked at these boxes for, I don't know how long, over the years, and I always thought they were really cool. They're really captivating, so I'm glad I got to rework them in a really fun way. Um, play with some cool type, really big on big type. So I hope you enjoyed watching it. Hope you had fun. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for, I don't know, how many subscribers am I at right now? Like 240,000. Jesus, okay. So yeah, we're making our way up there. I can't believe how many people have joined our creative community. That's really awesome. So thank you so much for subscribing and watching along with me and being a part of this fun little thing that I do. I hope everyone is staying safe and washing their hands, wiping things down, taking care of yourself, calling your, your grandparents, you know, look out for one another. So yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, I truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.